Ready. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. It's Platinum God Games here, bringing you The Last of Us 2, new game, whole game, grounded permadeath walkthrough guide. Wow, what a mouthful. This series of videos will be focused on big sections of the game, such as Abbey Day 1, Ellie Day 1, etc. However, it'll be broken up into chapters, so feel free to jump between the chapters as you see fit. I'll take you through every encounter and show you my strategies, whether it be stealth or kill all, or a bit of both. I'll discuss contingencies for in case sections go bad, which it can very well happen. I'll show you where I collect all of my items, parts, weapons, holsters, training manuals. I'll show you what I upgrade when, and I'll tell you why. I'll also show you all the door codes, gate codes, safe codes, and I'll be showing you a few tips and tricks on dealing with enemies such as clickers, bloaters and shamblers, and some hidden items along the way. So please don't forget to like, subscribe and check that bell alert so you know when new videos go live. I hope you enjoy the series. Here we go. Welcome to All Abbey Day 1. Now, uh, welcome back to all the viewers who have been keeping up with the series. This is the fourth instalment. Uh, so I hope you're up to speed with Ellie's day one, two, and three. Uh, if this is your first video in the series, then that's okay. Welcome in also. You don't need to worry about the Ellie percentage, but if you wish to catch up, there's a drop card in the top right corner of the screen now to my playlist. Now, the Abbey percentage of the game sets up a little different to the Ellie percentage. With Ellie, we're saving everything throughout the days to maximize what we have in Santa Barbara. With Abby, she has a lot of forced combat. Although I use a lot of speed and stealth strategies, we have a major event every day. In day one, she has the restaurant. In day two, we have the Rat King boss fight. In day three, we have kill all sections of the game, such as the brewery and the island. So we're gonna collect our items a little differently. A little bit about me, for those of you who don't know me. I'm a completionist gamer, Twitch variety streamer, and content creator, so check out my social links below, and you can catch me live on my Twitch stream every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 8am Australian Eastern Daylight Time at Platinum underscore God underscore Games. So, come and say hello. So, this is the only part in the opening sequence of Abbey where you need to stop, and there's some ammunition here to grab. You can have a practice shoot if you wish, uh, I choose not to. The first sequence we're going to go through is the ambush. And it's pretty hard, if not impossible, to die here. Although, I mean, you can die, but you'd have to be uh, extremely careless to experience that, or really unlucky. So we're going to hurry up and skip to that. And basically, as soon as the sunlight hits the roof of the Hummer, that's when the ambush begins. Now, as cruel as this sounds, remember they are only video game characters and horses. The best way to get through this section is to try to headshot the horse. It's a larger target. So I don't bother trying to shoot any of the riders on these horses. I just try and shoot the horse.
Welcome to On Foot, as this section is known as. Now, the first things we come across here are some items to craft, some pipe bombs, and I do so immediately, even though we don't really need them in this first section, but we will in the next section with the Shambler. Now, it's important to note we need to look at our items here, so you can see what we're going to upgrade what we're going to craft and certain things just like in the early percentage you cannot craft until you actually have the training manual so the next thing we'll get is the ability to craft shivs and you note down the bottom left here we have zero parts our first upgrade is at the first possible moment in time and we're going to be crafting the scope for the rifle so we're going to go around here and gather up some items uh, there is a melee weapon here of course it's a dodgy piece of wood with only three hits. We'll get some cloth, a bottle, and we'll also get some parts. And that's when we'll start to count how many parts we're getting so that you know if you're leaving a section without collecting all of the required parts for this upgrade. So by the time we leave this section here, we should have 21 parts. When we start the greenhouse, we'll have 31. And by the time we leave the greenhouse, we should have 75 parts. Now this is important because if you don't get all the parts, it makes the train yard very difficult because if you can't get the scope, then you're exposing yourself to more one-on-one -on -one combat or at least close quarters. Up ahead, we have three runners. There is one in the left aisle, stationary runner, towards the back end of the aisle. On the right-hand side in that aisle, there's another stationary runner towards the middle section. We're gonna take them first. As you see in the background there, there is a mobile runner who does a loop from left to right so they can see you in every aisle. If you've seen my previous videos, you'll know my little trick here from the Ellie percentage. I like to take a brick and do a shoulder swap you can see further around corners. So you grab the brick or the bottle, shoulder swap, and then you can actually pan the camera around while staying in cover. We're gonna wait for this runner at the back to move away, and then we're gonna go and kill this stationary runner here. Then we're gonna get straight back to this spot where we're hiding now before we go and take out the last runner. This is such a good series of games, uh, and I think my only gripe is exactly what you see happening here. Having to fight for cover space from your NPC, your non-player controlled characters and companions. Getting pushed out of cover, getting forced into the side of enemies and caused alerts and stuff I think is probably the worst part of the game. Not only do you have to fight the infected and other human enemies, your own companions are enemies as well, and if I were you as a player, I would treat them as I do, as just that. I don't rely on them really for anything, besides guaranteed areas where they grab enemies, even then they can miss, and they are always pushing you out of cover. These are the last of the items here, seven parts and some blade and then we're gonna climb up the other racking. Now, if you get alerted in this section, 
you can easily just climb up this little bit of racking here and let Mel, Alice and Manny take care of it. While you're standing here, you can watch the show in case one of them gets grabbed. Welcome to the Home Depot drop-in. This next section is where things can get very interesting. So there are so many variations of when the enemies can spawn and where you will encounter them. So I'm going to do the strategy breakdown a little different than I usually would. I'm going to let the start of the strat play out and then I'm going to take you through variations of what can happen, including glitches. So follow this first part of the strategy. This is what I will always do. Run immediately. Take the first hard left here through the gap in the shelving. Get out your bomb and throw it at the shambler. Keep your distance. As soon as it hits the shambler, run up and melee it. Bang, shambler's gone. Now turn around and look for this white flammables cage. Climb up on that. And here's where we're gonna stop and talk about variations. Okay, so the strategy you just saw is my preferred strategy for the simple fact that we need to get to the Shambler as fast as possible and hopefully when it's on its own and take that out because the Shambler can actually drop down below the flammables cage and do an acid cloud and still kill you whereas the runners and clickers can not get to you here. Now I'm going to show you a couple of scenarios and a couple of glitches that can take place while you're here on the cage. Now, the first two are different ways of getting to the cage, and one of them includes using the bottle. Now, you wanna preferably keep the bottle on you in case many or Mel get grabbed while you're standing on the cage. Sometimes it happens in the field of view that we have now, and you can simply throw the bottle at the runner and free them. Also, if they happen to get grabbed outside of the screen here, you have to jump off the box and go and get them. Now, you don't want to stop and shoot because that can result in getting grabbed and killed immediately by a clicker or getting slapped or grabbed by a runner. You can throw a bottle while you're running. So it is much more advantageous to hold on to that. So this next couple of scenarios are gonna show you different ways to get to the Shambler and contingencies in case things don't start out the way you want. So scenario one is a great example of what happens if you run down the first aisle instead of taking the gap between the displays here. Now the Shambler doesn't meet me in the desired location so I have to wait for it. I don't really want to wait too long because the runners will start to chase after you. As long as you get the bomb on it here, see I'm waiting, I'm scared, I'm nervous, so I throw the bomb at the Shambler, climb up on the cage and then I get out the rifle. It only takes two shots to kill the Shambler now. However, I'd like to save the rifle ammo, so preferably don't want to do this particular strategy every time. You save as much rifle ammo for the, the train yard as possible. You speed this up and wait for the Shambler to come back. And here comes Manny getting chased by a clicker, and this is where we're now able to kill the Shambler. So now you can just wait it out and watch the show and hope that Manny and Mel don't get grabbed. Scenario two is an example of what can happen if you throw the bottle at the runner. You can encounter the runner here immediately when you turn the corner or in the distance as you see here. Now it attracts the shambler, you get out your bomb, bomb the shambler, look behind you, melee the shambler and run to the flammable's cage and jump up as usual. There are no other throwables around besides the other side of the stage and inside one of the fridges at the end of the counters here at the checkouts. Now the next scenario here is the NPC grab scenario. So while you're waiting, Manny or Mel have been grabbed. This here is the worst case scenario because they have been grabbed around the corner, which means we have to jump down from the flammable's cage. Maximum risk here. However, we do have the bottle, which is why I say try and hang on to that bottle. Now we have to jump down. You have to look down below you, make sure you're not going to land on an infected jump off the box and run and throw the bottle. Wait for that target reticle to actually land on the runner that is holding Manny or Mel. And then just keep running and do a loop and get back onto the flammable's cage.
Excellent, no trouble there. Back on the flammables cage and safe. Now, let's say you're waiting it out and you see that all the infected have been killed, yet you can still hear one and the creepy music just keeps going. This is the first glitch here, around the corner to the right, where a runner can get stuck in the register area. You need to be careful dropping down. It should be the last one, but you never know. So cautiously drop off the box. Now, with your bottle in hand, just keep your distance and look around for it. It should be over in that right hand area. Look where Manny's facing, they're looking at him. And I think Alice gets this one here. Gives him a bite, there you go. That bite should free the runner, so I go get back on the box. Now they're done, okay. Uh, the second glitch that can take place here is around to the left hand side near the exit into the greenhouse. So you're on top of the cage, just waiting it out and they finally kill the infected for you. Even though in Grounded, all the NPC companions have Stormtrooper aim. I think in the end here, she actually throws a bottle at it and then shoots it. Here it comes. I'm like, really? You had a bottle this whole time? Why couldn't you free Manny? Anyway, so, around to the left-hand corner here, you can see Mel shooting in that direction. Same thing as before, drop down off the cage, go over there and have a look, keep your distance. You can actually throw the bottle and melee it, it doesn't matter. We are about to get a full pipe once we exit the greenhouse and there's a brick up the back of the stage, which is actually the entrance to the stage that we're going to grab anyway. However, Mel shoots it this time. Now in the interest of fluidity, I'll play the whole strategy in full. Okay, so as always, once you're up on top of the flammables cage, get your bottle in hand and just patiently wait it out. Now I've sped this up because you need to be patient. Sometimes this, uh, this can take a while. And in this particular instance, this, uh, this took a while. This is times 400 speed. So I think I was probably standing on the cage here for three or four minutes. Either way, doesn't make a difference. I didn't lose my run. And yes, it is kind of a cheesy strategy, but who cares? You get through it, you live it. There's no rules that say to complete permadeath, you are not allowed to use a cheesy strategy. Whatever works. So now it's time to do the usual. Go around and check all of the infected bodies now. You're looking for items, however, as I've mentioned, if you're making save files, um, don't collect these items because it will give you an unrealistic expectation of what you actually collect every time within the stages. Now I'm going to go back to the entrance of the stage and show you also where to get the brick and then come back here so you get reoriented with where the items are. Now, if for whatever reason you don't manage to get straight back onto the cage, there's some other items around here you can use. Like there's a hammer here, there are a few other bottles around in the stage, and there's also some more pieces of 4x2 or 2x4, however you want to say it, some pieces of wood. So back in the starting area where you came out from the racking here, straight ahead there's a bottle around our right shoulder behind us, there's a brick. Now I prefer to carry the brick, so I throw my bottle away, grab the brick, and 
directly beyond that other bottle that you found, two aisles over behind the washing machines here, there's another piece of 4B2 on the ground. There it is. And I think there's another one over to the right in a dead end aisle as well. Now I'm running back to the start where we come down from the cage. I say the start of the end so that you know where these items are. So there's the shambler. Now here in the shelving there is some tape or binding and there's a few parts around here as well in these toolboxes. Here we go. Yay, welcome to the greenhouse. So the first thing we're gonna do is open the backpack and R1 tab over twice to the diary and you'll see 31 parts we have. So we need to make sure that before we drop into the next section, we have 75 parts on us amongst other items here. So we'll go around and gather them up. As I've mentioned previously, it's a good idea to have a set kind of routine once you've learned where all the parts are, all the items are, so that you can kind of snake your way around. You'll find the most efficient way to gather all of these items, but if you have a solid routine that you've developed, you won't be on autopilot and miss items that you need to collect, especially parts or anything that you need for upgrades later. The way I've developed my so-called strategy for collecting these items is to weave around so I'm never doubling back and going across ground that I've already traveled. I won't go over to the left and then over to the right. You sort of, as I mentioned, snake your way through so that that way you can gather everything all up in one go and never have to go double back across the stage. These little sections, are, they become time consuming and wear you down. The part I find the most interesting about this particular section with Abby is that you're not really collecting a lot of useful crafting supplies. It's a ton of parts, which kind of disappointed me the first time I went through this, but now that I've developed the strategy that I have, it kind of makes sense. Alright, so before we drop out of the section, we need to check our amount of parts. And there you go, we have 75 so it's safe to proceed because there's no going back once you jump over here. As I mentioned back in Home Depot, we will get a full pipe and it is right here on top of the truck. Don't forget this one, it can come in extremely handy. There is an axe in the train yard as well. However, I try and keep all of that axe for my upcoming strategies for the rest of day one, especially with the restaurant. Okay, so when you grab this rope and throw it down the hole, be very careful about waiting for the X context action. Don't just jump in. You can die here. And it is the scariest context action ever. How she jumps and does a 180 in the air. Freaks me out every time. So the rest of the parts that we need to collect in order to upgrade the scope are in this building. This should push us over the 80 parts mark. And there's a few other items in here as well. Now, don't upgrade anything. I don't think we have enough yet anyway, but when you collect the pills, do not upgrade anything because we will upgrade crafting shivs once we get on the boat in the boat shed and collect the David versus Goliath training manual, which unlocks covert ops branch in the skills tree.
Okay, so there are no other parts lying around down in this bottom area. We have enough now to do the upgrade that we wanted to do. So we're gonna get straight over to it. Head to the rifle and upgrade the four times scope. The reason for upgrading the scope is when we're in the train yard ahead, it makes it so much easier to pick off the enemies from distance and avoid close quarters combat. They are very well camouflaged in their brown leather outfits in this particular setting and it's extremely easy to get ambushed and die. The next upgrade we will be doing for the rifle will be capacity. The amazing thing about this particular rifle is it is by far the most stable weapon in the entire game. So there are many more items here. Now you don't actually have to go upstairs first. Uh, I totally forgot. We can actually go down to the crank handle and activate the cutscene. Then we can take Mel over to the, the cage where she climbs up. Then you can come up here and get the scissors if you want to save some time. Be careful when selecting this context too because a context conversation with Mel pops up at the same time and you don't want to activate that, you don't want to trigger it because it's lengthy. Now. Now we're upstairs, she'll come along and open that door. And up here I'm gonna show you a hidden area that not many people know about. First thing we want to do now that we're through the door here is grab the ladder and stand it up against the wall of the room that we just came out of. So we can get up to the area I just pointed out. What do you see? No way out from here. A reminder, do not upgrade anything using these pills. We will be using them shortly to upgrade crafting shivs in the Covert Ops branch of the skills tree. Now here is the hidden section that a lot of people miss. And there's a full health kit in here. So you can see the area down there where we were. So this is a vital hidden room. There's more pills and some alcohol. All right, let's hurry this along. Now, I did a quick item check here, but it's not necessary to go through it. Just don't upgrade or craft anything yet. We need to get this ladder over to the boat and then throw up the rope, get the training manual, and then put the ladder across to the other side. Now you can, if you forget about those rooms, you can go back across the ladder. However, try and remember to go beforehand because it is extremely dangerous and you can die falling off that ladder. All right, here is a pistol round and the David versus Goliath training manual we've been waiting for. This will unlock the covert ops branch in the skills tree and we will immediately upgrade the skill craft shiv. And of course, yes, you guessed it, we're going to immediately craft a shiv. Okay, so back to the task at hand. We need to grab the ladder, put it over the other side and throw the rope over the railing. So you throw the rope over that catwalk there, then position the ladder underneath Again, it's another context when it comes to the rope where you need to make sure that you are waiting until the context 
shows up. You need to wait until it gives you the X command. So I'm really careful when I walk out on this ladder because again, it's another fall death. And there's nothing worse than having a fall death in a non-threatening situation. You've got to wait for this X command and don't push forwards. She will jump. In this demandable building here is where we will also find the safe code in case you forget it. It is the lottery numbers circled on the wall right here. I didn't bother zooming in on it simply because we're about to go and open the safe already. So once you've collected all the items in the demandable building, jump over the railing, go around the fence and head through the gap in the wall here. And as always, the safe code for our visually impaired friends is 173087. That's 173807. And it's in this safe where we find Abby's hunting pistol, which is an awesome weapon. It has a decent amount of weapon sway to it, but you can shoot through two people at a time. You can blow limbs off with it. It's a lifesaver and we're gonna use it straight away in the rail yard. Okay, quick weapon check. We're gonna to swap to the pistol and reload it. Check that the rifle is reloaded and swap back to the hunting pistol. We want that in hand. So welcome to the train yard. And before we carry on, I'm gonna stop it right here and talk about the particular section coming up. Now, this section is particularly dangerous and tricky for the simple fact that the Seraphites have on tan jackets which blend in with the trains in this section and various other background objects. They also patrol mostly in pairs, making it very tricky to try and pick them off one by one using stealth. However, this is why we upgraded the rifle to add the scope at the first available opportunity. And we also have the hunting pistol. So what we're going to do is immediately when we drop down, select the hunting pistol and run on the left hand side of the carriage that you can see straight ahead. And we're going to take the prone position at the end of the carriage in a fern and we're going to wait for the two seraphites to come out then we fall back and take out the rifle switch to the pistol as well and we're going to lie down in the grass and start picking them off one by one with the rifle and scope lastly i'd like to add the reason why i'm not doing a full strategy breakdown and analysis and i'm telling you up front what we're doing is because this can be a time consuming strategy and to do a full breakdown and then replay the whole scenario over again would be an enormous video so here we go let's get into it Make sure once you've dropped in that you sprint to the ferns. Don't just jog it in. Get that hunting pistol ready. 
and park it right here, stay right in the fern. And I'll zoom in to show you, forgive the uh, pixelation, zoomed in pretty far. Now, you're waiting for them to be one in front of the other. They will line up. Now occasionally, the second one might survive. But that's okay, we have enough ammo. Now, you don't have to grab that pistol round, but grab it now, reload the pistol, then take out the rifle and get ready to start picking them off using the scope. If you're lucky, there's a section right down the back where they keep popping up onto the carriage of the train that has the pipes on it. They keep popping up right there in the distance and you can just pick them all off. There should be five in this first section and my main piece of advice to you would be wait until you have the headshot. Don't take it too early and miss. You want to make every shot count. Now the beauty of this particular strategy is that they will never push back to the section where you are now. No matter where you are in the entire stage, you can always fall back to here and they won't push forwards. In fact, all the enemies throughout this section have a cutoff point where they won't push any further. The, the stage is drawn into sections. Now this is why I hang around here. Perfect, one of them's popped up and this rifle is so steady. Bang, you can just pick them off there and hopefully another one will step up in their place and you can pick them off in that location too. You can also hear Manny shooting down the left hand side of the train. There's usually one enemy, usually a bald guy who stays behind the tree and the stump tree and he'll duck backwards and forwards between that location. If you keep waiting here, you saw one just ran up and jumped there and with any luck they'll pop their head up and we'll say goodnight. And there it is, he stood up directly into our crosshairs. So we've got seven and five. Now we also have a brick so we're going to push up now, we're going to check where this guy is down the left and then push up down the other side of the train. Always check to see where these enemies are. So we have the liberty of zooming in here. As you can see, it's the black lady. Now, not the bald guy. I believe she was the second lady in the two that were having a conversation, so she survived. But the other guy popped up on the opposite side train and we shot him in the head so there's only one alive down here again they won't push forward to the location that i'm at now but i still want to make sure of their location before moving up and i preferably get on the back of this train or down the right hand side of the train and get to the back of the next train carriage you don't want to assume that they're dead or they're not looking at you and just jog in between the trains to the next carriage you're likely to get shot So now that we've moved up to the next carriage here, our next objective is to get inside this carriage. And we don't want to progress any further past this carriage, basically beyond the edge of the orange mud there. Once we get to the end of this carriage, four new enemies drop in at the back of the stage. Now we're gonna keep shoulder swapping here and trying to locate this woman here. There she is on the right hand side of the train. And we want her to pass from this right hand side of the train in between the two carriages and we're going to drop down on the left and choke her. Or we've got a brick in our hand 
And when she comes nearby again, we're gonna throw the brick at her. There's a bottle on the ground just over here. We can pick that up immediately. So she will loop around that log carriage there where you can see her passing down on the right hand side of the logs. And she can also walk almost right down the back of the entire stage. So this can be very time consuming and you've got to be patient. Now, she will do a loop between the trains that we're on, in between the carriage in front of us, and a loop around that log carriage as well. Now, if she's passing towards the back of the stage, what I like to do is what I'm doing now. She won't fire straight away. She'll spot you and she'll make note of it and then come and investigate. And hopefully that will change her pattern and force her to pass between the trains. And the main thing to be careful of here is that Manny can block you from climbing back up into the carriage. So make sure you're not parallel with him. As you can see, it's quite difficult to get her to spot you. And it's scary doing this because you don't want to die. All right, so this went on for quite some time, but I would rather be cautious than end my permadeath run immediately after I got to Abbey percentage. So you just want to get through this. So I fast forwarded this times 400, mind you. And eventually she does spot me and comes to investigate. So again, you just need to be patient. Keep trying to tease her, coax her out. Most times this doesn't happen. She will keep looping around on the left hand train. And when she does, you crouch down in the grass, you lie down in the grass and she will check behind the train looking away from us and we just grab her. If she looks in your direction, you throw the brick at her and grab her. Pretty simple. Now she spots me here and comes running up to investigate. Okay, so she's coming to investigate. Now, because I have the brick here, when she turns away, I'm going to go and take her. I'll throw the brick at her and grab her, and then fall back again, because pushing past the point of where we are will cause the other four enemies to drop in. Now, wait until the reticle is on her, then throw it and sprint. Grab her, choke her. Now, fall back the way that you just came as well, so you can collect the bottle. I can't stress that enough, you need to have that bottle on you. So we go back just on the other side of the fern here, there is a bottle. There it is, thank you. Now we're going to move up as quick as we can via prone dives, staying in cover behind this tree because two enemies will be approaching our area. You can just see the guy above the fallen tree on the right hand side. And we're going to grab the pistol and shoot that guy in the head, but we need to wait for him to loop back. Because we fell back and got the bottle, he's already reached that area where I would normally shoot him. There's also a woman on the left. She's on the train at the back of the stage here, on the left of the tree there. And both of those enemies can push up to where you are now. However, they won't go beyond the train where we were hiding before, so you can fall back there. So we're going to wait for this guy. We're going to shoulder swap and aim the pistol. And when we've got a good shot, we're going to shoot him and then sprint back. However, we're not going to head directly backwards. We're going to go backwards and left to the opposite side of the arena because we don't want them to have a direct shot at us. All right, so here he comes. We'll line him up. Now get out of there. Hopefully in line with the tree. Go left, right, and into the carriage. And this is where you wait again. Get your bottle, shoulder swap, and look. 
and we are going to try and do the same thing with this woman that we wanted to do with the other lady that we ended up bricking and choking. This woman will now patrol this area and we're going to tease her as well. So there's three enemies left on the stage. Again, she will not push up to the carriage where you're waiting or the carriage directly opposite us. And when we have a moment, we're gonna to swap to the other carriage. We want her to pass between those two trains on the left where we can lie down in the grass in the prone position and wait for her to put her back to us and stealth kill her. You'll notice even though she walks past, I linger a bit here because sometimes they can double back and then you lose sight of them. Now I know she's gone down the other side, I swap trains and the waiting game begins again. Now, this woman is doing the pattern that we originally wanted the black girl to do and she didn't do it. And beautiful, she's coming towards us. Now, we want her to go turning to her right and go between the trains. As soon as I know she's gonna do that, I drop down and prone. She generally doesn't look in your direction here, but you have the bottle anyway if she does. Okay, so now we're trying to get eyes on the other two ladies and I generally move up to the train with the pipes on it. There she is there. Get up here for a better look without being spotted. It's a little more elevated. One's on the other side of this train coming up to the log. The other one generally stays down the back right and goes up on top of the red caboose down the end on the left. Now we're going to push up behind the tree here to where we shot the guy and then push up to the log. Here's the other brick over here on the corner of that train there. Really hard to see from there. And the other brick is on our right, on the right hand side corner of the train on our right. Now you need to be really careful here because the woman will come up and look around the gas train on the right hand side and she will look on our side of the log. But you do get cover from her either side using that stump where the tree has fallen from. Now when you push up to the log here and the stump you have to keep an eye on the woman that's up the back right. You don't want to get spotted by her. She can spot you and she will shoot. Okay, so now we're going to cautiously push up behind the log here and wait for her to come back again. Now, ultimately, you can throw the bottle at her and grab her and then move her behind that big thick tree in front of us. That's what we're going to do. And try and wait and time her cycle in her patrol with the lady in the background jumping over where she just went. She jumps over the right hand side of the carriage with all the pipes on it. When the other woman's close, she won't hear the bottle. Once we've done that, we're going to go to the right hand side over here and grab the brick. Now you'll notice on this cycle, I let her go, because if you keep an eye on the background, the woman is looking in our direction, and I thought, no, this is no good. So I let her walk away and I wait for the next cycle. Be patient. Having said that, let's speed this up. Now, beware, she can actually come to the left-hand side of the tree and look behind the stump where you are. Now, if you think she's coming close, Throw the bottle, grab her, and drag her behind the tree to obscure the view of the woman in the background. 
Now this is the opportunity we've been waiting for. The woman jumped over the other side of the train, run out and grab her, drag her back to the tree, just in case the other woman heard it. Okay, now cautiously go back and get the brick. As I mentioned, there it is, bang. Now we're going to push up. Be very careful, it's the last enemy. You don't want to make a mistake and get shot. So just keep an eye on her and gradually push forward until you're close enough to throw the brick at her. Then do exactly that. Throw the brick, grab her, and choke her out. You can hit her with the pipe, it doesn't matter. We're about to get a full axe anyway. Right, so now we're up behind this train. Our next objective, preferably, is to go and hide in these ferns just over here. Right in there. Uh, we want to lie down there. She'll walk past, the reticle will automatically lock onto her, and that's the easiest takedown. Now, this woman does a loop around the train here. She can also come on the left-hand side of the logs directly ahead of us, and that's ultimately what we want her to do. Sometimes she stays around the back end of that train. She'll climb up and look around and then drop down and then she'll climb back up again, and it's quite annoying. Now, I did something here that's quite risky. You can easily go beside the train and follow her. But what happened is the game didn't actually give me the reticle. Now she goes and has a look up top, then she drops off the back. So I went after her. I manually threw this brick. Which was really, really lucky. Then I got stuck on the tree and started to panic, but thankfully Abby grabbed her. So a lesson in what not to do that I thought I would leave in the recording. Wait for her to come around, just be patient. I mean, I know at this point, you've been waiting for ages, but you're, you've survived, you made it through. So there's the other brick that I mentioned, and what I'm gonna do here is take you all the way back to the start, so you can get oriented with where the trains are and which ones we're gonna go and climb in. I mean, you can just climb in any train and have a look, but there's pistol ammo in the very first train. This is the area where we dropped in, that I said you can fall back at any time and hide behind the barrels in safety. And Alice and Mel usually come along for the ride there and hang about with you. So we got the pistol ammo from here. Then we're gonna go and also pick up a full axe that I use as part of my strategy and we should hold on to that by the time we get to the end of Abbey Day 1 if all goes well. I use that axe as part of my strategy within the restaurant. Now we have no enemies I can show you. The line, this is where the bottle was, the line between the trains here is what will trigger the drop in of the enemies at the end of the stage. Right, so once you cross that threshold, that's when the enemies will get triggered 
grab the rifle here. They'll come down from that caboose and they'll drop down into the stage. So once you pass this very line here. Now let's go get the axe and there should be some explosive and cloth. Okay, no other items to pick up. Now, you can check the bodies here, however, they pretty much never have anything. Once we get up here into this section, you want to have the brick and pistol in your mind. Because we're going to go and dive behind the counter, and you need to position yourself carefully here, so that Mel doesn't get in your way. You're going to brick the lady straight away, and then you can headshot her. And you should be in relative cover, you don't actually have to shoot anyone else. Too many of them. All right, now you'll notice also I accidentally did a shoulder swap before, I didn't mean to. And I fired a shot then because I thought I don't want her to come out of stun and start shooting. Now you can target this woman that'll climb up here, but generally she won't get a shot on you. She gets shot by the incoming WLF. And that's that. So, grab the bottle on your way out, and most occasions there is one item. It's either a quarter of a roll of tape, or if you're lucky, and I mean very lucky, you'll find some ammo. It's unlikely and very rare. There's some cloth, cool. Again, because we're going by the idea of the save files and you don't want to have an unrealistic expectation of the amount of items that you have. That's why I generally leave those things where they are. If it's ammo, eh, that's okay. But still, I generally know how much ammo I'm going to have by the time I get to the restaurant, by the time I get to the container yard, etc. Alright, let's head to the fob and gather up some items there and push into hostile territory. Alright, so even though we're getting a bunch of parts here, we're also collecting pipe bomb and some ammo for both the pistol and the rifle. We're not going to upgrade anything yet. When we start hostile territory and we have 50 pills, we will upgrade faster grabbed enemy movement speed. So when you grab an enemy that's been stunned or from behind, you can move them around faster. We will also upgrade the rifle capacity and we will also be upgrading Abby's skill of momentum. Now, some people watching this know my streams. I can't help myself. There's certain conversations yeah, that make me laugh, so better? I've decided to leave uh, them in my guide. In, so, yeah. Hang in there. How's the hand? Well, I'm gonna keep most of my fingers. Brother, you only need three. Am I right? Dude. It's a little bit of cheeky humor there. Okay, let's jump ahead to the flashback. Even though I don't feel it necessary to leave this part of the game in, I have done simply because you can die here, you can drown. So, we'll put it mostly in fast forward anyway. Nothing you collect here or do here results in a change in the actual played game. Now that cutscene that I just skipped, be very careful because this gameplay starts almost immediately and if you're a couple of seconds late in starting to swim with Abby, you can drown here. Alright, so 
Abbey day one is a very long day and there's nothing else ahead that can actually kill you so we are going to go ahead and jump straight to hostile territory. Welcome to hostile territory. This is where Abby's day one can get very tricky and quite complicated. I will try and simplify it as much as possible as we go through it. First, let's look at the inventory and we'll talk about what we need to do. We will craft a silencer coming up in the next section and we will be acquiring a lot more pills to upgrade Abby's skills. We will not be touching field tactics until near the end of Abby day three. So first we'll be grabbed enemy movement speed and we will use that for two upcoming sections. Then we will acquire the Urban Warrior Training Manual which unlocks the close quarters branch of the skills tree and we'll upgrade momentum. Then when we get to the ferry we will do faster prone movement. Momentum by the way is an extremely vital skill which gives Abby the ability to melee strike kill an enemy and for a brief window after that the next melee strike will be a kill also. So let's check out the weapon cross, go through and reload all of your weapons. Make sure that you have the pistol, not the hunting pistol. There's only one round here, so that's okay. <laughs> all right, as always, when you're traveling, try and make sure you've got a bottle or a brick in your hand. For whatever reason, I prefer the brick. I think it's a more localized sound when you throw it, whereas a bottle can get more attention. There's only a few items in here, mostly parts. There's nothing really to acquire in this section until you go out on your own from Manny. As far as upgrading with parts, upgrading weapons and stuff, uh, we will upgrade the rifle capacity when we get in between the tilted buildings before we get to the Stalker Forest and the restaurant. So when you're on the item hunt, gathering up parts and crafting items take your time there's no rush it's better to make sure and double check even if it means going back to a previous section when you can if you feel like oh did i collect that because that happens a lot especially if you're trying permadeath runs over and over and here we go here is the urban warrior training manual which unlocks the close quarters branch of the skills tree. So let's check out the new branch in the skills tree. However, do not upgrade anything else other than grabbed enemy movement speed. We will need that to grab a runner in the upcoming section. Then we will be upgrading momentum. After killing an enemy with a strike for a short time, your next melee attack will also be a strike. When they say strike, they mean a kill. So it'll be a single hit kill. Okay, now there is a bottle on the ground here if you need it because there are two ways of dealing with the clicker that jumps out at you when you are sliding in between the walls. So I don't like to use any ammo here at all. So when this clicker comes to us, I will show you two different ways you can actually dodge out of this attack and save your ammo. So you can either throw a brick at it or you can angle the camera in a certain way and then dodge backwards if you just dodge straight backwards, you will hit the wall. And that can make you panic because you don't line up with the doorway. So you'll notice that once I fight off the clicker, I'm using the left stick as soon as the game gives me control to move Abby slightly to the left. And I pan the camera a little bit. That lines her up with the doorway. Now at this point, you probably should have a save file for hostile territory, so practice that a couple of times and get comfortable with it. You can also throw the brick or the bottle as soon as Abby gets to her feet. I find that sometimes it doesn't fire, so that's very dangerous. Anyway, you run around the truck here, 
make sure the clicker's coming with you around the truck to buy your time and just climb back through and slip through the wall. You don't have to use anything. Okay, so that's that. Now, there's a few items here. There's a quarter of a roll of tape and we will be picking up some parts and we will get to our next upgrade with the pills. And here we go. You need to upgrade grabbed enemy movement speed. There is a runner in the next section that is stationary and we need to grab it as quick as possible and move it behind cover so the other runner doesn't see us. Okay, so a little moment of truth. Once you pass through that gap there in the doorway, you need to be holding the left stick towards the runner on the other side of the wall there and spam triangle, spam the grab button because we need to grab this runner. Now, once you lunge out and grab it, see it almost moves away. Drag it behind the wall here so that other runner doesn't see you. And just wait. Now, having said that, if you do miss the runner, you can still stealth kill them all here. It just makes it a little more tricky and a little more time consuming. So we are just going to wait for this runner. We're gonna keep an eye on it through the crack in the door here. And when it moves around, we will take this one out next. Now, on the other side of this wall where Abby is facing, there is a stationary runner and we will kill that one after. Just keep an eye on this one and once it walks past, you should be able to slip through and sneak up behind it. Now behind us also, on the right hand side there, over the distance, beyond the bar, is a stationary sleeping clicker. That's why you don't want to make any sound. So go and grab this runner here, then we'll pick up some canister and some alcohol, and we'll then we'll annoy the clicker and run straight past it. Now, you can throw a brick or a bottle. I just feel it's not necessary. I like to do a little sprint in a circle to cause an alert, and then I just lead it away. Try not to get too far ahead of yourself. You don't want to run around the corner and slip through the gap in the wall, and then find that the clicker changes path and meets you on the other side of the door. You can die instantly. Now you can just jog it out, slip through the door here, and jump over the wall, and you're free. Then we're into Chinatown. Welcome to hostile territory, Chinatown. So if you had to use your brick to stun the clicker in the previous section, there's another one here. There's quite a few around here. There's another two down the street here. And when we go around the corner to pick up the full bottle of alcohol, there's another two bottles on the ground there also. It is important to remember that you must have one of these for the next section of enemies. There are two clickers in a room and we will need a throwable to distract them. If you are familiar with my other videos, Ellie Day 1, 2 and 3, you'll know that I generally don't like to 
craft items and leave myself with less than one of each crafting item in case of an emergency. However, we're gonna craft two more pipe bombs here because I know in the upcoming section we're going to gather more explosive and canister and there is no real danger that can't be simply avoided by running. However, if this is the first video that you're watching from my series, I have a rule of thumb that I do not like to leave items on zero. In case things go bad, you can actually choose what to craft at the time. As always, for our visually impaired friends, the safe code is 689689, 689689, which incidentally reads the same upside down. A quick reminder, now that we've collected more pills, is do not upgrade anything. We are still a little short of upgrading momentum. Okay, a little preemptive talk on how to deal with the runners here and the clickers. We need to open this shutter. A runner will come out of the bathroom there. Once we drop in the hole in the ceiling, we're going to brick it, then kill it. Then we'll go out the back and get the shotgun. We need to make sure this shutter's open. First, we need to deal with the clickers up there in the restaurant, then jump from that ledge over Abby's head across the street. All right, now we have collected enough to be able to upgrade momentum. Now, momentum is one of the most important skills for Abby to learn. It saves on your melee weapons, and you can also single hit kill enemies while you are unarmed, just not clickers. And we will use momentum in the upcoming strategies in the restaurant after the Stalker Forest. Okay, a quick look at the parts count here, 74, just so you can track against the amount of parts that you have, so you might know if you've missed any or not. Okay, make sure your brick is in your hand. It takes Abby longer to get the brick out when she's lying down. We need to deal with these clickers. I like to move through almost immediately and aim outside. Bang. Now, keep proning towards the clicker. As soon as they're outside, up to crouch to move faster, they won't hear you. Grab the cloth and the bottle. Now, don't move beyond this table here until both clickers have come back inside. If you move too far forward to the balcony, the clicker can walk straight down the balcony towards you and the strategy has failed. Once I'm satisfied I've got enough room to get onto that balcony and line myself up for the jump, I go up to crouch and then for a jog and sprint. And over we go. And again, that's another section we've now got through without using any ammunition or doing any killing. It's unnecessary risk. Side note, I'm looking at these tables because there is pistol ammo there if you've used it and have none. Ultimately, we want to save all items and ammunition for the restaurant, also if things go bad. Uh, this item here is Abby's artifact, in case you're interested. Okay, back to business. Bottle in hand, a runner's going to come out of that bathroom. Now, I like to drop in backwards, so I am facing the runner. Bottle, grab, choke. Okay, two very important things here. One, pick up another throwable. Two, open the shutter, because we are going to make a quick escape once we pick up the shotgun.
Right, so in case you don't know, the shotgun is behind the front counter here. And once we pick up that shotgun, we are going to run very quickly over the counter there, out that shutter we just opened, because two runners, I don't know where they come from, we were just up there, are gonna drop in that hole in the ceiling. So, grab the shotgun, vault the counter, jog to the shutter, slip through the gap, unclench bottom. And if you're feeling particularly cheeky, you can taunt the runners. Okay, now pay close attention here, I'm going to tell you about a secret. On the table here is a short arm holster. So a pistol holster, and we are going to ignore this. Now be very careful also that the context will stay on the screen when you move to the explosive here. If you are too quick to try and grab the explosive, Abby will turn around and grab the holster. We do not want that. So grab the explosive once the context has gone away, grab the part. See how that context comes up? Be very careful. Grab the part and ignore the holster. And just to let you know, that's not actually the secret. The secret is we will get the long arm holster after this little section ahead. So that's why we ignore it. If you pick up the short arm holster, the long arm holster will not be acquired until after the restaurant. Okay, just in case you have used your melee weapon, there is a full pipe here. Hopefully you still have a full axe. Now, as we move around here, beyond that yellow strip there where we drop in, that is the point of no return. So you need to double check all of your items, make sure everything's locked and loaded and in their correct slots. We check their inventory here. So have a double check and see if your items match mine at this point. Once we get to the ferry later on in the game, we will get another training manual. But before that, we will be upgrading faster prone movement, which will actually help us in our strategy on the ferry. Now, as I mentioned before, for this upcoming section, it is wise to craft a silencer here. It will only be a two shot silencer. Do not craft anything else because we will use these such as the shivs, and an upgraded melee weapon later on in the restaurant. Man, I double and triple check everything before I drop in here. And before I do drop in, I actually want to show you all some ideas about the section we're about to pass through. So we're going to go through there, through the hole in the fence here. Let me get a better angle. There's a hole there we're going to pass through. Now, once we crawl through the grass here into that shop, there's a full health kit and there's also a roll of tape if we need it. And we're going to pass through that entire section in stealth. Now, the enemies will start to populate the area. They will come, need the rifle for this one. They will come from this building and they will go down the path here in two pairs of two. There will also be a sniper up here on the second or third floor that will watch over the entire area. And two pair of Seraphites will spread out left and two pair will go right. There's two enemies that will patrol inside as well through that area through the doorway there. One will stay this side of the wall and one will stay on the other side of the wall. We're going to stealth across that section in the back there and up around through the grass and climb up the bus. So two couples patrol, okay, they will be chatting with each other and we need to keep an eye on what they're doing because it is random which direction they take. Sometimes they can go through this cafe here. Hopefully one couple pairs off this way 
and the other couple goes the other side where we're going. And they too have RNG, which denotes sometimes they will walk towards us, sometimes they'll cut across to this side where we're looking now, and we don't have to deal with them. So it depends on whether we go or we stay in the grass in cover. Also, this is a good place to make a save file. Welcome to Hostile Territory First Encounter. So I try and time my prone dive here so I slide through the gap, turn and do a few more prone dives to stay out of the view of the sniper, they can spot you here. Once you're behind the counter, there's a full med kit if you need it, and some tape, and immediately head back up the stairs. Now, once you get to the top of the stairs and climb up, immediately on your right there's some cloth and canister. Now if you hold triangle, she'll grab it all at once. Then do a final prone dive here to avoid the sniper and get over to the other side of the grass as quick as possible. This is your safe spot and this is where we're going to wait to see what this couple ahead of us and the other couple do. The woman went behind the pagoda here and the guy is just here on the right. Now ultimately we want them to walk across to the left then we want them to walk back and go diagonally across the right hand side of the stage which means the other couple will be coming up behind us into the building we're lying next to here they will come out here and look over the area we should be able to get from one side to the other avoiding the sniper all in stealth possibly causing a soft alert which is fine now, if the couple does come up this side of the hill, it's okay. Where we are with Abby right now, we can sit here and wait as long as we need to until the rotation of the guards is perfect, what we want. Now they're leaving the area, we need to start making our way down the hill so we can make the transition as quickly as possible between the short grass and the long grass. And at the risk of seeming really daunting, you need to keep an eye on these four here. You have on the top floors there snipers, on the bottom floor you have two guards patrolling. And that couple will be coming in behind us, so don't mess around in the open. Prone dive straight into the longer grass and move across the stage as quickly as possible. Do not wait or hesitate. Now you cannot prone up these stairs, so get up into crouch for as little time as possible. Back down into prone. There was a soft alert caused just up here, and it was, I believe, by the sniper. Still check all of the guards. We know that we've got four guards behind us and two on the lower ground floor of the building. And we'll do a freeze frame up here so you can get a better view of the sniper. Bam, here's the freeze. Now there is the sniper on the second level, and we also have the two guards down the bottom on either side of the wall to keep an eye on. Now, don't linger here, keep moving towards the rear of the stage and keep an eye on the patrols behind you in case they come and investigate. Now, it's quite hard to see through the grass here, so pan the camera around. It is definitely your friend. Now, the first guard we're going to be looking for is the guy that walks up where we're going to climb in, and here he is on the balcony. He can't see you, so that's fine to keep moving around to the right of this wall. And we're still keeping an eye on that sniper. We need to wait for the sniper to be looking the other way before we make the journey across the grass. We need to time this here with the three patrols. So if you look straight ahead, you can see the lady on the bottom with the reticle there and the sniper at the top. Now we want our brick in hand in case we have to run and we're going to look around for the patrols once more. Now you can actually see three of them, which means both couples are not focused on Abby, which is excellent. So we're going to wait for the sniper to be looking away and the guy on the balcony to go, and we're going to make the journey across. Now at this point, if you are spotted, you need to climb up the truck, throw the brick to stun anybody in your path. We weren't spotted, so we wait here to see where this couple ahead of us on the reticle there is going. Once they're not looking over here and the guy has come out for a final look, we're going to sneak in behind him. Now once we climb up to the opening here, diagonally right of 
Abbey, there is a collapsed ceiling. We're gonna climb up there to the floor above and diagonally right of that is a doorway to the stairs. We go up one floor and that's where the exit is. Now we're gonna sneak in behind him and take cover behind the concrete, checking on the woman on the right. She does a patrol here and stops at the window. We're gonna wait here, out of her sight, for the guy to come back. Keep checking to be on the safe side. And when he comes in, you wanna be right behind him. There's some canister. We're gonna grab that. Because I'm a loot whore. You don't have to grab it, you can climb straight up if you wish. Get straight over to the desk here, grab the canister and go straight back and climb up immediately. Now he will spot you. So we're gonna run straight ahead and grab the alcohol. When Abby wants to move, grab the alcohol, go straight through the door here, straight ahead, up the stairs one floor, and exit the area. And that's it, you are safe from this little vault onwards. There we go, slide down. Now I highly recommend practicing that area a few times and seeing the different rotations of the guards, of the patrols, and where you are most likely to get spotted. You do have the silenced pistol in case one of them spot you early. You can take out two of them and hopefully stay in cover. Incidentally, if you didn't get the shotgun back in the China shop in Chinatown, it is there with the backpack. All right, got a few items to gather up, some blade and some cloth. Then we're gonna check our items and then upgrade the rifle capacity. So as you can see, we do not touch field tactics. We've got 85 parts at this point. So we've already added the scope to the rifle and here we wanna do capacity. For the restaurant and for Rat King, there's nothing worse than being caught in an area where there's lots of infected, maybe you miss a shot here and there, and then you've got to waste time reloading. So now we have a 12 round capacity in the rifle. Then later on we will be upgrading the reload speed of the shotgun. We will put a scope on the crossbow once we acquire it and upgrade the stability of the hunting pistol. All right, let's get going. Now you will want the silenced pistol in place of the hunting pistol for now. And it doesn't really matter what you choose here. By default, I always choose the shotgun, however, we're about to acquire the long arm holster that we purposely skipped the short arm holster for, and here it is. I purposely choose to skip the short arm holster so that I have the ability to switch between the rifle and the shotgun in the restaurant. It's especially helpful if things go bad or you miss shots and you need to pull out the shotgun to blow away a clicker or something like that. It's more helpful. Now you will get the short arm holster just after the restaurant in the warehouse. Welcome to Hostile Territory, second encounter also known as Tilted Buildings. So straight into analysis and contingency, freeze it here. Starting with analysis, now there are two people on our left that are having a conversation and we're going to keep out of their sight by prone diving three times forwards towards the edge of the platform where we're going to jump from one building to the other. 
Three prone dives should be perfect to leave enough space to do a sprint jump at the end. Make sure that you time it so your jump leaves from the very edge of the platform. Make sure that you stop moving when you land and stay in crouch, and if this woman is alerted, you have the silenced pistol shooter in the head. The only time she would become alerted is if you didn't land properly. So sneak around behind her, grab her, and this is why we have faster grabbed enemy movement speed, drag her back, choke her. You'll see another woman in the distance, she doesn't really come into play, on the right hand side there. Make sure you keep this same direction when you drop down and crouch again, Abby will stand up by default. Keep moving forwards and keep an eye on the guy on the left here. Follow him through, staying in cover the whole time, out of his line of sight in case he looks back, it's very unusual he would. Now we're watching these two, the one on the left and the one on the right. Now, we're going to wait for this guy with the reticle on him to walk all the way back past. So we're going to follow him and as soon as he walks around into the section where we would drop down if we missed our jump, we're going to turn and go. We're not going to worry about wherever anyone else is. Jump over. Now move around this right hand side wall and get straight up into cover behind the end storage unit. Now we're waiting for the brute. There is that woman we saw before above us, but she won't see us. She just went past a window. When he's walking away here, sneak around behind him and look into the distance at the guy coming back into the arena. He may see us. If he does, just run as fast as you can down here and slide out of the stage and that's the strategy. Okay, so onto the contingency before I let the strat play out in real time. Now, the contingency can be a little more complicated. However, it is in the same area and it is in the event that you miss time you jump. So here. Now I'll freeze it here because if you accidentally jump early and you don't fall to your death, you will most likely land on the lower level below where we are trying to jump now. Now it is possible to survive if you land down there and I'm going to show you how. So first we'll speed this up because you need to see the area. So we leave this footage in. Now, once Abby drops down the hole here, where we will land will be directly on her left shoulder. So this can play out almost identical to the original strategy. However, you're going to come out behind the people that we are watching and avoiding in the original strategy. So you are going to come out behind this guy here on the other side of the wall behind the long arrow and you're going to continue on where the diagonal left arrow is, up into that green section. Then once we move further up ahead, we're going to come out behind the other guy. Now you'll want to brick him. You'll come out directly behind this guy here. You throw the brick at him and then run out, sprint out, following that long arrow and the diagonal right arrow and drop down into the muddy area and you should be able to exit the stage the same way you would as if we completed the strategy normally. You may get shot, you may take damage, but you should survive. It also shouldn't matter if you get damaged because by that point you'll be into the Stalker Forest. So we'll speed this up here so I can show you where you should come out using the contingency here. You'll come out next to that pillar there and straight down into the mud as you can see we're doing in the normal strategy. So you come out at exactly the same point and you make your way to the mud slide and exit the stage. As always in the interest of fluidity here is the full strat in real time.
Okay, so that is Hostile Territory. Now, we are going to skip the flashback, the winter visit, because there's no way you can die. So we're going to jump straight into the Stalker Forest and the restaurant, which is a particularly difficult and often glitchy section of the game. Welcome to the Stalker Forest. Now, these two sections of the game are, as I mentioned earlier, quite tricky and possibly the most glitchy areas of the game. Now, I highly recommend making a save file here for practice. And if you follow this simple set of rules I'm about to share with you, you should be able to get a solid strategy down and make it out safely every time. Of course, it is glitchy occasionally, so things can go wrong. Here we go. Rule number one, never attack first. The stalkers can duck your attack and push you back, which leaves you in a brief stun animation and could lead to you getting slapped or worse still, grabbed. If you are grabbed once and slapped once, that is it, you are finished. Rule number two, at all times, keep both stalkers on screen in front of you. If that means dodging away or running away to reposition yourself in the arena, then do so, but try not to keep your back to them for long. There should never be any more than two active stalkers within the arena. Rule number three, stay away from the edges of the arena because a stalker may spawn behind you and grab you at any given time. And lastly, Try not to take on two stalkers at once. Try to get them single file, back away if you must, but try and have it so only one of them is attacking you at a time. So starting out, find a good rhythm. You want to dodge, swing, dodge, swing. Each stalker should take about four hits on average before you kill them. And keep listening out for where the second stalker is. Keep panning the camera, moving around the arena. Stay away from the edges. Here we go, both stalkers in front. One at a time, dodge, swing, dodge, swing. Remember, they are stalkers. They like to attack from the sides or from behind. As you notice, that one spawned behind me. And again, the second spawns in behind you, so back away. Now they start to try and double team you at any opportunity they get, so I keep trying to move around even if you must stop your attack, then do so. Create space for yourself. Another one behind me. Stay on your toes and maintain this rhythm until you see the uppercut attack from Abby. That's the last stalker. The amount of stalkers can vary between six and eight on average, but there can be more, so just be prepared. Now, the upcoming section is pretty straightforward. During the travel here, just stay reasonably close to Yara in the glow of the torch. If you stray outside that, you can be grabbed by a stalker and perma run over. In the upcoming section, there are four throwables, and we have Abby's momentum. Now, I like to wait until Yara has been completely grounded by the stalker before intervening to prevent an air swing because they're still in an animation. Immediately grab the brick from the car and move back into the middle of the arena. Keep panning around, left and right, for the first stalker. Once you brick this stalker, use a melee attack and look around immediately for the next stalker to use momentum. There's a bottle on the car here. Grab that and try and take down the third stalker. There are only three stalkers. Now, if you miss momentum, it doesn't matter. You have four throwables. One on each car, one on the ground over here, and one next to the tree. If you have to, use one throwable per stalker. Don't force momentum, just be safe. All right, as always, in the interest of fluidity, here is the full section in real time.
going. Out of these woods. We gotta run. Now. Coast is this way. Direction looks the same. You sure you know where you're going? Alright, that is the Stalker Forest done basically. One last little bit, just keep following Yara and Lev. Stay as close to Yara as possible. Now, it wasn't necessary to pick up the brick when leaving because when you climb into the new area, Abby will drop the brick. Okay, so this is fairly self-explanatory, but there is a, uh, a snack here in case you're low on health. We're pretty good. And we're about to step into the ring with a brute. Now, this wonderful character here, in-game, is known as a Brute. This one in particular is affectionately known as Bertha or Miss Trunchbull. Now, these characters generally only have two moves. They have a grab and they have a swing. And they hit hard. So, I'm going to break this section down for you, including how many punches it takes to get them to phase 1, 2 and 3, how many hits Abby can take, and what happens when you're thrown. However, we're going to stop it right here because some ground rules need to be laid out. Rule number one, never attack first. It will most likely be blocked. Always wait for the enemy to attack you, then dodge and counter. Rule number two, never attack any more than two hits at a time. It is greedy and careless and the third will most likely be blocked. Now, rule number three, if you lose count of what phase you're in or how many swings they are going to take at you, do not attack. Just keep dodging. They will never jump from two swings to three swings for no reason. And if you miss your window for attack, just wait for the next window. Keep dodging. Take your time. And having said that, lastly, the hit count goes as follows. Bertha starts swinging once until you strike her twice. Then she escalates to two swings. After eight hits, she goes to three swings, and after 14 hits, you've won the fight. In all three phases, after her swings, her next attack is usually a grab, if you are in close enough proximity. So now let's have a look at the breakdown of the fight. Of course, phase one, one swing. After two punches, she goes to two swings. There's the grab. The game is pretty forgiving as well with early or late dodges. On this next set of attacks, I purposely leave it to show you the window. Remember, if you forget the hit count or the phase that you're on, don't attack, just dodge.
And there you have it. That is Bertha. Now I'm going to show you what happens with Abby when Bertha grabs you. So here is the first grab. This can drain a lot of your life and put you red screen. Now, you can actually be grabbed more times on red screen. However, Bertha will throw you to the ground. It will not kill you. Then you need to move the stick, the left stick, to move out of the way. Bearing in mind at this point, if you are hit by the axe, you're finished. Abby can only sustain two hits by the axe. And that's it, permadeath over. However, you can be thrown multiple times and still get up. And so we're gonna look at what happens when you get hit with the axe. There you go. And the second time, it's uh, curtains for Abby. And we don't want that. As always, in the interest of fluidity, here is the full strategy in real time. And that's Bertha finished. Well, hopefully you got through that without taking any hits. Uh, and certainly hope you didn't lose any permadeath runs there. Onward we go. So now we've got the backpack back. It's time to go through and check to make sure all of our weapons are loaded. We need to remove the silencer for the pistol. And we need to check out the backpack. Now, do not craft a melee weapon or an upgrade. We can, however, craft a shiv. We will get some more blade inside this mechanic shop ahead of us and some in the restaurant as well. And the next upgrade we do is going to be faster prone movement. Now that won't take place until we're on the ferry. We only have 25 parts, as you can see in the bottom left corner there, and we will do some more upgrades in the next day. Now, do a weapon swap here, just to check how many hits you have on the axe. Now, awesome, we have a full axe at this point. So, this determines how many hits we are able to use within the restaurant and in the upcoming sections, there's some runners we need to deal with. We will be using the axe twice to deal with the second pair of runners. Welcome to the restaurant lead-in. We will be coming up on the restaurant very soon. In the meantime, we're gonna gather up the items here. Now, there is a workbench here, but we're not gonna upgrade anything, nor can we afford to. The next upgrades won't be until Return to the Coast when we pass back through the now Seraphite occupied container yard. There's another workbench that we go past twice and we will upgrade the crossbow. We'll pop a sight on top of that and we will upgrade the shotgun reload speed. All in preparation for the Rat King now. Here is the Bring Your Own Bullets training manual, which unlocks the firearms branch in the skills tree. Now, after we purchase faster prone movement on the ferry, we will be purchasing craft incendiary shells. And a little bit later on, we will purchase craft hunting pistol ammo. Being able to craft incendiary shells is particularly helpful against the Rat King and Rat Prince bosses and also prevents you from wasting any alcohol or explosive that you might not be able to pick up 
because you can't craft anything else with them if you have full health kits or you have too many pipe bombs already. Coming up around the corner here, there is a full med kit and a health bar snack in the little mini fridge on top of the counter. Now, try and heal yourself, and if you can, always heal yourself with the med kit first before grabbing the snack, or you're totally wasting it. You may find, if you were hit by Bertha, that the med kit doesn't quite heal you fully. So the little snack should top it up to full. Okay, once we drop off this ledge here, I highly recommend making a save file to practice the restaurant. Now, we are going to be attacked by four runners that come down that hill in two pairs. Now, Lev should shoot the first one, and I highly recommend saving your rifle ammo and running around the van here and the car until Lev finally shoots the second. However, if you must, you can shoot them with the rifle, but do not use the brick or the axe. We need to save it. Also, if you have less than nine rifle ammo, don't use it. Now, the only reason I actually shoot this runner here is because Lev hit it with the arrow and it didn't die. So I knew it only had one hit left. Now, this next two can be a little tricky. Get your brick ready and wait until the first runner gets down the stairs. So you don't end up trying to melee kill on the stairs and have a miss or a double hit. Then you need to dodge backwards after killing it immediately to avoid the swing. There's nothing worse than being slapped by that runner just before you go into the restaurant. And if you do get slapped by the runner, use a health kit because if you get grabbed in the restaurant, it will kill you. So gather up the parts and the pills here. Then I'm going to share a little tip and secret with you. But first, I'm going to take you through this next section. There are three stationary runners below us. Thank you, Lev. Move, move. Watch out for that. There is the first runner. Now, if we were to drop down and try and kill him, another runner will see us through that window. So, we are going to wait by that wall for the runner to come through. And we'll get a better look once I jump over this platform here. I don't think you need to stay in crouch. Or they'd hear you jump, but I prefer to anyway, it makes me feel safer. Grab the brick, that's important. Now, if you look through here, you can see a stationary runner that'll come through that door if we drop down. There they are. They start moving once we drop off this upper level. There's also another one on the other side of the wall here. It is a woman in a vest. Right there. However, first things first, when we drop down, this runner on our right, this one here, will walk through that door, stop for a second here, and then walk under the platform where we are and stop again. At the same time, the runner in the back there actually starts moving from where she is towards the main door where we escape the area 
to around to this door here and then along the wall and we will slip through the gap and take care of her. Now the little tip. We have an axe and there is a pipe here. There's no way to climb back up here once you get down. So we're gonna swap the weapon. So we can see also the axe has four hits. Move a bit closer and swap back to the pipe. Now if it lands across you like that, you can push it with Abby and push it off the edge. Awesome, doesn't matter if it falls off the edge in front of us or to the one to our right, you can pick it up and maneuver it after you kill the runners. If it's being difficult, I like to swap to the pistol and aim, which makes Abby nudge it. Once you knock that off the edge, we are ready to drop in. One last tip. Now, the reason I told you to make a save file when we dropped into the previous section is because the pipe will not remain if you decide to restart the encounter or restart the checkpoint a few times once you drop down. Now we need to wait for this runner to move through the corridor and have its back to us. Be very careful on the timing when you slip through to grab the runner. It can cause an alert. Now move the runner away from the gap in the other wall. Try not to cause an alert here. Now we're gonna wait for this other runner in the other room to walk past a little bit. Then we're gonna slip through and kill her. If you're lucky, Lev will take care of the one in the kitchen. But until you can actually see that taking place, I would stay crouched. You don't want to wake that runner up. And we're, we got lucky. Nice. Now we need to gather up all of the items and prep the area for the upcoming fight. Don't forget to smash this window. We will be jumping in and out of it. There's also three drawers in the kitchen here that I like to open. Only the far right drawer has an item. However, if you come in to grab the pipe or you have to improvise on the strategy and you come in here to defend yourself or change shotgun ammo, something like that, Abby can grab the drawer instead and that can kill you. Now onto the pipe. Now we can check how many hits we have on the ax. We should have four and yes we do. Now the pipe is in a great location. We will be coming back here to grab the pipe in a bit of a hurry actually. And I'll talk about how many hits we're gonna use on the ax and when to upgrade it shortly. We'll gather up some more items here. Do not forget to smash this window here. This is why I have the routine I do of moving through to collect the items. So I don't accidentally forget to smash that window and then try and jump through it when I've got a clicker chasing after me. And of course it's not broken and you get grabbed and eaten. Now, as you can see at this stage, we don't need to craft anything. We are stocked up and ready to go. However, we're not quite full on everything, so we're not gonna waste any of these items either. Now, there's two bricks here, one here and one near the door. I highly recommend you memorize their locations. You will be using both of them and in a bit of a hurry. Gather up these last items here. Don't forget to reload the rifle. Okay, I'm going to stop it just here because once you trigger that door on the left, there is no going back. Now, this is the part where I'm going to have to explain this entire strategy because it is next to impossible for me to create a contingency strategy as I normally would, as you've experienced throughout these guides. The area is so complex and it's time-based and very random. Now there is a cheese strategy where you can wait in the kitchen provided you didn't break the window and you wait in the corner for them all to slip through the gap in the wall and you can headshot them. The problem I've found with that strategy is that it's very easy to get cornered, especially if you're too slow or you miss a shot, especially after the shamblers have dropped in. Also, I like to conserve all of the items for upcoming strategies and for the Rat King and the Rat Prince. Everything is in preparation for Abbey Day 3 also. Now this section and my strategy are very much about timing and routine. And it's also the most efficient way I've found to eliminate all of the enemies and escape the restaurant with the most amount of items in your inventory. 
So I'm going to quickly show you the layout of the area and where the enemies come from, including the first one should come in from that doorway there and land around that gravel. Then we're going to have a runner come at us through the gap in the wall or from the doorway to the kitchen. Now, the next runner after that should come in through the gap in the wall here. However, we will take that window of opportunity to quickly upgrade the melee weapon to refresh it. Then we need to quickly shoot this runner in the leg and then in the head before turning back around to get the clicker. Now you want to get the clicker with the brick and if you're quick enough to do that and then melee it, the next runner will come through this window here and we can use Abby's momentum to kill it. It'll drop in from that doorway right there. A clicker will also drop in from that location also. Now, if we head back to the main room where the two bricks are that you need to memorize, if our timings are right, the first shambler should drop in here with a runner shortly after it. There's also a doorway here where a clicker will drop in and other runners at various times. And lastly, we're gonna head back to the kitchen. So you know this doorway and get used to it. Jump through this window. A clicker will come from here and this is where other enemies, including the second shambler, should come into the arena. I like to shoot this clicker with the shotgun as soon as it lands and then straight away leave for the next location. Now, it's important to note that I have the rifle on the first place in the weapon cross and the shotgun on the outside and I only have the pistol because I want to conserve hunting pistol ammo. Welcome to the restaurant. This strategy consists mostly of routine and timing and the use of Abby's momentum. If you practice it a few times, you'll find the restaurant is a breeze, especially if you learn when and where the enemies drop in. Now this starts very quickly. The first thing we wanna do is get the rifle and shoot the first runner in the leg, then chop it with the ax. You don't wanna waste your brick here. Now momentum is active, the next runner should come at you. Now you have two hits left on the axe, maybe only one, but you need to use the window of time now to upgrade the axe. Shoot this runner in the leg and then anywhere else and it should die. Reload and get ready for the clicker. It's brick time. The next runner's coming in the window in the background. Now watch out for the lunge. It can lunge quite a distance at you. Now we need to wait in the middle here for this runner to go through the gap, otherwise it'll meet you in the doorway, and you don't want that. Now always get the clickers with the brick to trigger momentum before the melee weapon. Don't try and just go up and melee them. If they hit you, they'll grab you. All right, kill the second runner here, slip through the gap, grab the other brick, and head to the kitchen. Also, just briefly, if you start just swinging the axe without hitting them first, it can take more hits off your melee weapon. All right, the click is gonna drop in from the top there. Now, I accidentally missed my shot here a bit with the shotgun, so I had to reload on the run. Hopefully you can get it with the one clean shot and not waste a shotgun round. Now run through, sprint to the next section. Another click is gonna drop in and you wanna shoot this with the shotgun too. Now, there's a few runners that are gonna come your way and another clicker will drop on you. Hit this clicker with the brick and then melee the next runner that comes along. Do not kill any others. Or the shamblers will start dropping in. You wanna get back to the kitchen and grab the pipe. But when you have no bricks left, you shoot them first with the rifle, then melee them. Then you have to get straight back to the main area to cause the shambler to drop in that doorway we looked at before. Ignore that runner, but keep an eye on it. There we go. Now avoid the bomb and the runner and melee the shambler. Get straight through the gap because it'll explode an acid cloud when it dies. If you wait for this shambler here, it'll duck through the wall. You can stun it with the bomb. It kills the runner also, and then you melee it. And the reason why you do it all this way is so you don't run back through a shambler's acid cloud after it dies. And that is the restaurant. And one last thing, if you do wish to craft two pipe bombs and run around and collect the items, you can. 
However, I recommend against it because a few more enemies do drop in and you can run back through the acid clouds left by the shamblers. It is not worth it, really. As always, in the interest of fluidity, here is the full strat in real time. the doors. Make sure there are no infected. Welcome to the coast. Now, first things first, we need to craft some more pipe bombs after using them in the restaurant, and we need to double check Abby's health. Whoops, accidentally closed the backpack. All right, so craft two pipe bombs to replace what we used in the restaurant and free up space in the inventory. 
After the container yard, we will be purchasing faster prone movement and we will also purchase craft incendiary shells, which really helps with the upcoming boss in day two, Rat King and the Rat Prince with burn damage. And it helps us to gather up more alcohol and explosive, not wasting anything. Okay, quick weapon check, make sure they're all reloaded. Move the shotgun back to the first step in the weapon cross. Now check Abby's health. If she does not heal and she grabs a weapon, you have full health. So before moving through, don't forget that there are 10 pills here in the shipping container. They will be needed. And once we get into the building, there are a couple of parts. We're going to collect them, of course. And when I say a couple, I do mean, unfortunately, a couple. There's two parts. Whoa, yes. All right, now there's also a workbench here and we'll be using this on the way back. There's no need to use it now. There's also something up here that I think a few people miss. Now, because we got the long arm holster back in between the two sections of hostile territory and tilted buildings, here is the short arm holster. Yay. Excellent. See, even Abby approves. So now we have the option of being able to swap the pistols around. However, I like to leave the pistol in the first step on the weapon cross for now, because most enemies only require a pistol bullet to stun them, giving you enough time to get away. Plus, we need to save the hunting pistol ammo for later on. And speaking of hunting pistol ammo, here's something else that people often miss. Okay, change to the shotgun before we drop into the first encounter of the coast, known as the container yard. There are a bunch of stalkers here, note the one in the distance running away. There's a few runners and a couple of clickers too. Now, I normally kill this runner here, just so it doesn't sneak up behind me if I get an alert. And it sometimes has an item, however, this time, no dice. This is a stealth slash speed strat, keep an eye on the clicker on the right. I normally sneak up behind the truck here as close as I can get until the clicker comes around to my side of the truck. Watch those shipping containers and on your left as well there are a bunch of stalkers lurking around. Now what we're going to do is wait till the clicker comes around and sprint over to the right hand side, pick up the brick, jump the concrete, grab the items and then try and leave the area. Keep panning around to check on those stalkers. They are sneaky. I only just caught this one as I was panning the camera back around. This is another reason why I take the far right hand side path. And if you start running early, you won't get lunged at. Now, if you have to leave the brick, then leave the brick here. If you feel like they're close. Grab the parts and the pistol ammo now. We won't have time on the way back through. Stay left of the runner but not too close to the car. There's a stalker there that'll grab you and that clicker will chomp you. Now just jog it all the way out. Just keep climbing up and jump over to the next section. Something worth noting is try not to jump early to fall straight to the water and if you do, stay away from the right hand side. I've seen someone's permadeath run end there when they clipped the wall and fell to their death. And that is the Coast Container Yard. Now if you're wondering why I said we don't have time to pick up the pistol ammo and the parts, that's because at the start of Abbey Day 2, return to the coast, we pass back through that shipping container yard to get to Yara and Lev, and it's filled with Seraphites. My strategy is a stealth speed strat, and we will not have time. It doesn't really matter if you miss the pistol ammo and the parts, however, every little bit helps.
Welcome to the coast, second encounter, the ferry, also known as the ghost ship. Now I'm pretty sure of the inventory that I have most of the time, but I do like to check before picking up something, especially if it's like three quarters of explosive like this is here. Nothing worse than picking it up only to realize that you had two and a half or two and three quarters and now you've just wasted a lot. Unfortunately, at this point in the game, there's not a lot we can actually craft. It's when we start the next day, we should be able to craft a few more things. You note, there's nothing else in this area really anyway. And just for a laugh, note the door was in front of me, but for whatever reason, every time I go through this area, I feel like the door is back out that other open doorway. It's not. So this next section I use a stealth strategy that is pretty straightforward. There are really only two areas of concern. The first is a close encounter with a clicker and the second is a potentially glitching runner and I'll show you how to take care of that. So there are 14 enemies in this section. There are two runners ahead of you in the corridor. On the next deck up there are three stationary runners and two clickers and on the top deck there are four runners, two clickers and a shambler. The two runners are directly ahead of us and where I'm aiming at the top of the stairs there is a stationary runner and down that corridor there a clicker will spawn and start walking towards us. First we need to deal with these two. And where I am aiming there is a clicker walking up and down a corridor just outside the bar. Now I said this strategy is stealth, and it is. If you remain in stealth, all of the enemies that are in your way towards the exit are easily disposed of. They are all runners that we kill and we distract one of the clickers and that's it, straightforward. Here's an interesting fact. If you don't kill these two runners here, on the top deck the two runners that we encounter up there don't spawn. However, we kill these two for the pills. On the next floor up, there is a clicker in the bar here and there is a runner down the very end of the deck. At the top of the stairs here on the right, there's a corridor and the clicker will be coming towards us from that corridor. And incidentally, at the end of that corridor on the right is the other stationary runner. Now you want to take care of this runner as quickly as possible and get into that room ahead of us. Grab the parts on the right, then directly behind you there's some blade and the pills we need. I instantly go to prone after I grab the pills and purchase faster prone movement while I'm waiting for the clicker to pass us. Then I like to follow the clicker as close behind as possible. For the purpose of this recording, I waited until the clicker was passing the door before I upgraded. I already would have purchased faster prone movement by now. Come to think of it, I'm not really sure why I did that. Doesn't really seem necessary. I guess I was worried that the zoom in here would obscure the view of the clicker. And I think it would have, because I wouldn't purchase faster prone movement in the doorway. The clicker can locate you. Alright, back to business. Now, those windows through the doorway there is where the clicker is walking up and down. If you don't have a bottle, grab it. We will need it. Now, it only walks up and down that corridor. And if you watch, I time my movements so that when it's about to do its echo location, I'm in between the windows. If you remember I mentioned in Ellie Day 1, clickers can pivot in your direction for no reason at all when they do the echo location. It's 
So I've slowed this down here. Now you grab that bottle on the way out after you throw this brick. Throw it through the doorway. Now you can see during the slowed down footage the clicker goes through the window at the end. Now if the clicker is coming back in your direction, make sure that you're still and you are not outside the bar because it will come through the door when you try and grab that bottle. Here you can see it just pass through the window. It's very subtle, but it also means it's time to go. Now if you didn't manage to see it leave, and you hear it echo locating at the door, you can do a few prone dives down here to get some distance, as long as you get around the corner. Now stay in prone for a while till you get away from the clicker, then up into crouch and grab this runner here. Now make sure you pull it away from the window a little bit so it doesn't break the glass. You don't want to cause an alert here. Alright, once we get to the top of the stairs and turn left, we're going past a safe that has a stationary runner next to it. Now, you need to make sure that you are far enough away from the safe and possibly turn the cam to the right so you don't grab the safe instead of the runner. If Abby does grab the safe, it will alert the runner and you'll be stuck in the safe animation for a little while and you'll probably take damage. As always, for our visually impaired friends, the safe combination is 90, 77, 1. That's 907701. Inside this safe we find the Identify, Counter and Destroy training manual which unlocks the Ordnance branch in the skills tree and we will look at what that opens once we make it to the bridge and escape. Okay, now take out your throwable and shoulder swap so you can peek around the corner and see where this runner is. Looks like they are up the other end. Throw in a prone dive to be safe. Now just wait behind these gas tanks until the runner comes back. Now there's something fascinating here. If you look through these windows, the frosting on those glass doors disappears. You can actually see through. It's really strange. Yay, fun fact. All right, we need to kill a runner here. And I prefer to use the crossbow here instead of the silenced pistol to save the silencer. And there's a good chance if you land the headshot that you'll get the crossbow bolt back. Now take note that I don't shoot it when it stops. It's too close to the clicker and can alert it. I wait until it's stumbling back towards me briefly. Now, if you do find items like the canister here, feel free to pick them up. I don't pick them up during my guides here so that you have an accurate idea of what items are constant, the items you will always collect. Now keep an eye out for this clicker. Once you're certain the clicker has done its routine facing you and you can sneak past, then do so. Now on the other side of that barrier at the end, give a better look here if we can, right behind there is the shambler. We need to get to these windows here to the passenger seating area. Now, this is also the second area of concern that I mentioned. There's a runner in there doing a U-shaped loop backwards and forwards from one side of the cabin to the other. Keep an eye on that clicker. Now, you slow it down here, you'll see the runner. The reticle should jump to it. 
Now, if you approach these windows and the runner is turning back to go the other way, it will spot you. And also, if you are too close to the wall, the green panel there, the graphics clip causing an alert. So, as soon as we get inside the bridge, I will show you the contingency for that. Now, you want to position yourself on the right-hand side of the window, facing left. You don't want to be moving around when the runner comes back. So once the runner reaches the end of its patrol and stops on the left hand side of the window, jump in the window and start spamming grab. Now get straight back into the prone position, go and check the corpse of the other runner we shot with the crossbow, hopefully we get a crossbow bolt back. Then staying in prone, go up the stairs and into the door to the bridge and exit the section. Oh well, no crossbow bolt this time. However, that's okay. Once we leave the section, there's a crossbow bolt in the captain's body. Okay, so that's it for analysis. Now I'm going to jump back briefly and show you the contingency for the graphics clipping on the runner when you are below the window. Just waiting for the runner to reach the end of his patrol route. And when he turns back, we'll get another look at that shambot on the other side of the boxes and turn around to get against the wall under the window to trigger this graphics clipping and I'll show you what I mean. So there's the shambler. Now the whole idea behind this contingency is basically just running around and trying to make your way to the exit door after checking the body for the crossbow bolt. And if you take care of the runner as soon as you can, the clickers and the shambler are pretty easy to run away from and go back into stealth. But watch what happens when I rub up against the wall or move as he's coming past. But there is no way that runner could have seen me or even heard me in stealth like that. It's a glitch. So I just keep my distance from them. Basically run around in a circle to lure them away from the exit door so I can leave. Now, that clicker on the right there should have already been alerted. There's a pistol ammo on your left, a pipe there on your right if you need it. Now, I spend a lot longer here doing this than I actually need to. I could already have escaped, but for the purpose of showing you the contingency and how you can just jog around, I've stayed here way longer. Now, there's also a spicy moment coming up where I get caught in the cabin room behind me, back where the safe is. Now when that clicker came out of the door, it left me no option but to go back up in here. And then when the shambler starts climbing up where I was going to jump back out, I thought, okay, what do I do? And Abby would not get out that hole. You should just be able to run or jump through the hole. Now I know they're up the other end of the boat. I can grab the bottle, the crossbow round, and exit. Now you don't have to mess around as long as I did, but it's pretty easy as you see not to kill anybody. You can just keep running around, you don't have to use items, it doesn't become a kill-all. And just for the record, you don't need the bottle, there's plenty at the aquarium. As always, in the interest of fluidity, here is the full strategy in real time.
Okay, so that's my strategy for the ferry, aka the ghost ship. Now we're gonna grab the alcohol and the crossbow bolt here. Always remember to check your items if you forget how much you have so you don't waste any. And we did collect the training manual, identify, counter, and destroy, which unlocked the ordnance branch in the skills tree. So we're gonna go and have a look at what that actually unlocked. So we now have access to faster crafting, improved melee weapon upgrades, which we will be getting both of these. And eventually we will get to improved pipe bombs. And later down the track, we will also do improved silencers. But at this point, we're going to craft incendiary shells. So purchase that. Crafting incendiary shells is not only helpful to prevent us from wasting alcohol and explosive we come across, it helps with the Rat King boss. We will purchase craft hunting pistol ammo in the future, however, before we reach the Rat King, we will purchase faster crafting and improved melee weapon upgrades. And eventually we get to upgrade the improved pipe bombs also. Okay, let's head back to the main page. Now, you can see incendiary shells are available for crafting. Now, we can actually craft one now. There is a quarter of alcohol up on the overpass as we leave. However, I always recommend leaving at least one of each item. What happens if you are running past and you totally forget to turn back and get the alcohol and canister? Then you're gonna be short. So as a rule of thumb, I recommend leaving one of each crafting item just in case things go sideways. Then in the moment, you can decide if you need to craft something for killing or something for healing. We're going to craft this incendiary shell now, freeing up space for day two when we will collect more explosive and more alcohol. Now it's not really necessary here to do a shuffle of the weapons but it is a good idea to change from incendiary shells to normal shells so you don't waste that one incendiary shell that you have. At the start of the next day, we will do a weapon shuffle anyway for the upcoming strategy. Let's fast forward through this. There are no items between here and the aquarium to gather up, unless of course you're looking for the coin in the fountain, but that's not what this guide is about. I assume that most of you would have collected everything and gained all the trophies, and just want to do this permadeath run for fun. There's a brick here in the grass. There's a few bottles inside here as well as a couple of bricks on the roof. Now I like to try and get the bottle through both panes of glass at a time. I'm, I'm weird like that. I missed on this occasion. Now it's very important that you remember, before you drop into the next window, grab a brick because there is not one between where you start with Abby in Return to the Coast and where you exit. And in case that encounter goes sideways for you, of course, it's always handy to have a brick or a bottle. Excellent. So we only have one more encounter before we officially reach Abby Day 2. The reason I say officially is when you see return to the coast load up. It actually states that it's Seattle day two, yet if you make a save file there, you'll see it still says Seattle day one. It's not until we get to the shortcut when we venture out with Lev that we are officially in Abbey day two. Welcome to return to the coast. As I mentioned, this is the unofficial start of Seattle Day 2, even though it says it on the screen in a save file, it is still Seattle Day 1. That's why it's in all of Abbey Day 1 video. Now, this is a speed strat that I use to get through here, using one silenced pistol round, one normal pistol round, and a crossbow bolt that we hopefully get back. First, we're gonna have a look at the inventory and organize the weapon cross as usual. Now looking at the inventory, the only thing we could craft is an incendiary shell and I don't want to go below one alcohol. I like to keep one of each crafting item. Also looking at what we've already purchased when it comes to the skills tree, there are a few things that we will be crafting throughout this day. 
hunting pistol ammo will come into it a little bit later. The first two things we will do is faster crafting and improved melee weapon upgrades to get to improved pipe bombs for the Rat King. And a little bit later towards day three, we will increase our silencer. We will improve that and again, hunting pistol ammo and towards the end of day three, increased health for Abby. We have 113 parts at this point and just after this section, we will upgrade the crossbow and the shotgun. Looking at the weapon cross, you want to have the crossbow on the inside and the shotgun on the outside. Make sure it's not on incendiary ammo. And we will leave the silencer off the pistol for now. Make sure everything's loaded. And I'm gonna show you this area before I move on and show you where we'll be moving. Not sure if this is necessary for people, but we'll climb down there where we originally escaped the stage, run across the grass behind the shipping containers here where there are two Seraphites. One is hiding behind a car and the other is hiding further up the back of the stage with a rifle. There's also a man doing a patrol to the back right of those shipping containers, one to the front left and middle and there's two brutes patrolling in and around those containers there. One normal Seraphite guy makes his way out to the concrete bollards at the front also. We're not gonna be encountering any of them. And that's the beauty of this strategy coming up. I was gonna speed this up a little bit, but there's not much point in doing so. Now this all happens very quickly. Okay, so let's begin the analysis, it's only brief. So you wanna be taking out your pistol at this point, make sure the silencer is not on. We're going to shoot around at the bottom of this pillar here and sprint. That will get their attention. Now you wanna reload your pistol and attach the silencer, then swap to the crossbow. Now stop sprinting around here and just jog in. I like to do a few prone dives into the grass you're going to use the crossbow on the woman hiding behind the truck here. Hopefully we get that crossbow bolt back. Now, there's a woman around the corner on the left. We're going to get her with the silenced pistol. Try and be as quick as possible here. Now, if you are actually interrupted at this point in the strategy or you get seen beyond this point while you're opening the shutter, there's really only one place to get yourself to, to hide and defend yourself. And that is behind that red structure there. Use the rifle, use the shotgun, use what you need to, to survive. There's only three regular enemies left and two brutes. Now don't take too long checking for the crossbow bolt. In this occasion, we don't get it back. Get straight to the roller shutter. It is quite a long timer to open the roller shutter too. And in this case, we actually get a soft alert here. We get spotted just as we escape. It's not only the brute here that sees us too. There's a guy directly opposite the roller shutter. As always, in the interest of fluidity, here is the full strategy in real time. And that is return to the coast. Now, there's nothing left in this warehouse here, unless of course you forgot to pick up the holster on the way through. So now we're gonna go and visit the workbench and upgrade a few of Abby's weapons.
So, we're going to start with adding a scope to the crossbow. Now, in Abbey Day 2, in the descent and in the hospital, we will be taking out a few clickers using this. Plus it helps on Abbey Day 3 later on to hit some human targets that are in our way. We are also going to upgrade faster reload speed for the shotgun. There's a few things that we will be upgrading on the way to the Rat King. Comes in very handy. So a quick look at what you should have so far. We won't be doing anything else to the rifle other than the capacity and the scope. Then we will go to reload speed for the crossbow. That comes in extremely handy. However, as you can see, it's also quite expensive, 80 parts. Now, we will not be doing any more upgrades to the shotgun, it is not necessary. We will be upgrading the stability on the pistol. Helps with silenced headshots. And we will do the stability on the hunting pistol also. All right, that's that. Time to get a move on. Let's do a quick weapons check. Not that it matters, we're at the end of the day. I think it restarts with default layouts when you start again anyway. It does with Ellie. If you did miss the pills, they are in this red shipping container. They'd be here on this wooden crate. Coming up next is Abbey Day 2 and the shortcut. So I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons and check that bell alert so you get notified the next time a video goes live. Also, if you have any questions, chuck them into the comments below. I'm Platinum God Games, and until next time, game like a god.